You just tuned in to the Tiger Toledo Show. This shit right here, man. 25, 150. Uh, long documents is 200, potentially 200 and up. Uh, you know, so on and so forth. So I feel like my brain is kind of too much all over the place. And that's why I don't have down what you're saying I need to have down when it comes to the phone call, if that makes sense. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. And everybody's going to go through that where where you're trying to get to the point where you're cross-examining the client, where you're trying to dig deep into what it is that they really have. It's almost like an interrogation. Doesn't it feel like that sometimes? Yeah. You're examining the document or examining, examining the client to the point that you're trying to uncover or reveal something that they have, right? And then... They might not know what they have. To be honest, they may not know. A lot of clients don't know. And when you when they when clients feel interrogated, they feel like you can't help them. So when you can't help them, you know, hey, I'll call you back, or I'll just go to the UPS store, or the price that you threw out, which was which really should be about four hundred dollars, that price doesn't make sense to me because you haven't justified or expressed to me what it is that I'm actually paying for. So there's a process that go about this, and this is not found in what you would traditionally find in loan signing training, because this is not about the document itself. This is about acquiring the client. And it all starts from, number one, knowing what you charge, number two, approaching this like a business and not like the job in which you receive appointments, but you get the ones that come to you, that, and then also not be pretending to be an, an attorney. You don't know how to being an expert on these things. So it's, and all of a sudden it becomes fun <laughs> because you're helping people and they don't feel like you're interrogating. Does that mean? And, yes. And so in addition, I, um, I got Mr. Tiger's call script, modified it to my business names and whatnot. So I know that, but not knowing what you were going to say or like my frame of mind is um what is it the freedom voice number that i have set up i'm waiting for that specific supposedly it's going to have a specific ring that would let me know it's those people calling as opposed to my regular phone calls if i hear that ring then i'm like Ooh, go get the script now i can follow through and say what i need to say but i just jumped on this live i'm like let me just throw myself out there Shit, let's, run, let's run the script right now Let's run I'm the sorry. let's run the script right now. What's good? Let me go find it. Hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> now nah, fuck that. I, I want to see oh, you go <laughs> off the rip. Come on, let, nah. Let's let's go in. Ring ring. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Ring. Listen, let, let me give you some. Yeah. Let me give you something to, to consider right now, though. Right, it's going to it. Right, and it, it's it's you know. It helps you, right? But ultimately, you want to... You're just helping this person. That's all really what you're doing. All right? Okay. You, so, the whole point is to help the person, really. Let them talk or listen to what they say. And, you know, don't worry so much about... Uh, let me dig deeper into this person's personal lifestyle and their bank account, <laughs> and let me find out. Because like, you don't even want to share that information, but just listen to the person. All right, you got let, it. Like, let, let's go. Let's go. Ring, ring. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hold on. Okay. Thank you for calling Miami Dave Broward, Apostate Agency. How may I help you? Who am I speaking to? Hi, my name is Ladesha. How may I help you? Hi, hi, Ladisha. I'm looking to get a power of attorney done. Can you help me out with that? Absolutely. We charge one fifty for our power of attorney. Damn, you went straight to the price to kill already. So, <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> he just shot me early. <laughs> I came in peace. I came in peace. Was that sorry? Shit, a buck fifty. What's mm. good? What's pop? <laughs> oh goodness. Um. I don't even have a valid photo ID, by the way. But uh, yeah, 150. Come on through. <laughs> come now. Come right now. Oh my 
<laughs> yo, I got me oh, one. Right there. Right, right. I'm running a scam. I'm like, yo, I got one, son. I got one. <laughs> she gonna come notarize this joint, kid. We taking Nanny's like, house. <laughs> Get all this kind of bitch. Woo! Damn! I, hey, that's the first time anybody bucked a shot at me that quick. Shit! Oh god! Last time I got shot at that quick was niggas in Albany projects tried to rob the kid. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> okay, take your t- <laughs> take your time. So I want I, I want you to approach this like 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 a consultant. Like a consultant, okay. okay? Take your time. Ask me what's the situation. How are things going? Just have a friendly conversation. Like you're, you're gonna help your your grandmother. Okay. Ring, Can ring, I ring. Ask something, Tiger? Huh? Can I add something? Yes, yes. So when you say when you say that, also consider, right? Take your time, but consider. What am I actually paying for? Right? You haven't. You just threw out 150, but I don't even know what the hell I'm paying for yet. But on the other hand, like, we actually might. That might be dirt cheap. True. Right? Hey, come right now. Come right now. Okay, great. When can you come? Right now? Okay, good. Don't say less. Say less. Don't say another word, right? So, but the question I'm asking is what am I. Find out what the person's paying for first. Okay. All right, ready? Just relax. You're good, sweetheart. You're good. Ring, ring, ring. Yeah, you're good. <clears throat> Thank you for calling Miami Dave Broward at Pasteen Notary Agency. How may I help you? What's your name again? My name is Ladisha. All right, let's start all over. I need I need you to hit me with that name. We got we we got to get that 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 greeting tight. Gotcha. Ring, ring, ring. Thank you for calling Miami Dave Broward at Pasty Notary Agency. My name is Ladesha. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Ladesha? I'm doing well. How can I help you today? Wonderful. First of all, kudos on that. Star, medallion. You good on that. All right. Let's try it one more time. I need to drill it home. Ring, ring, ring. Good morning. Thank you for calling Miami Dave Broward at Pasty Notary Agency. My name is Ladesha. How are you today? I'm good. How are you, Ladesha? I'm doing well. How may I help you? Yeah, Ladesha, I'm looking to get a power of attorney done. Can you guys help me with that? Absolutely, we can take care of that for you. Uh, with regard to the power of attorney, may I ask what exactly is the situation? Beautiful. Damn. No call script needed. Huh? Some love, y'all. Huh? Some love in the huh? Yeah. Yeah. See, it's, see, it's different when you're helping out Nana. Nana, what's good? Yeah. Like, like, what's going on, Nana? Tell me the situation. Why you need to get a power of attorney done? All right. So, Ladesha, gotcha. uh, here, here's what's going on. Um, my mom just had a stroke. Uh, it's hard for her to get around right now. It's, it's. So, I she wants to make me her agent. So I can take care of these financial affairs. Absolutely. Uh, my condolences to you. I am praying for her to pull through. Uh, we can definitely help take care of that for you. With regard to you being her agent, um, are you doing just the medical power of attorney? Because in addition to that, there can be a financial power of attorney that you can put together. That way you can take care of her medical decisions and her financial decisions to help. Ah, Tech, did you see that? I see you smiling over there, Tech. You see how she she eased that upsell in there, brother? Real smooth. Absolutely. She just went from 150 Absolutely. to 300. Easy. Easy. You would make Brooklyn niggas proud. <laughs> Yo, why you gotta buy one crack rock? Buy three, nigga. Like, come on, man. Let go, let go, let go of that ten. <laughs> that was, hey, listen, that was fantastic, because you understood that most people when they're getting power of attorneys, there's usually two that's attached, right? You're either gonna get the medical and the financial. 
or you're just going to get the financial. But I'm glad that you coupled the two because now you're taking more of a consultative approach that's going to help them out. You know what I mean? And you and it's so much easier. You didn't even give me a price. But you running the numbers up on me. Okay, so um Yeah, you know what? That wouldn't be a bad idea. The medical and the financial power of attorney would be great. Um I don't have okay. the paperwork by the way. Okay, so first with regard to the paperwork With a power of attorney, you need two witnesses for the state of Florida. So will you be able to provide those witnesses or would you like for us to provide them for you? Uh, can my cousin be a witness? Hmm. 18 years or older and um, has to be not related? No, doesn't have to have an interest. Um, so in a situation like that, when you're trying to gather intelligence, I want you to put them on hold and check. Say, can you please hold while I check? That way it gives okay. you a chance to I'm gather sorry. your thoughts and it doesn't sound like you're, you're trying to figure it out while they're on the phone. So I'm with sorry. that being said, tell me, uh, let me check for you. Can you please hold? Gotcha. Go ahead, do it. Understood. Uh, give me a brief moment. Let me place you on hold, and I'll go and check for you. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. And then Google that shit right on your phone. <laughs> this is real. Gotcha. You know? Okay, and then come back with an answer. It, 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 no right or wrong answer, but just uh, come back with an answer for me. Okay. Um, yes, your cousin can be one. Hmm. And if you can think of anybody else... Um, that would be fine, or we can provide that additional person for you. Okay, is that an additional charge? It will be, yes. Okay. Um, all right, so so what else do I need? So, with regard to the actual signing, uh, I need you to come with a valid form of ID, and I need you to physically be there. I need your cousin to come with a valid form of ID. I need your cousin to physically be there. I'm going to bring that other person as the witness. They're going to physically be there with their valid form of ID, and we sign it and take care of it for you. What about that paperwork I mentioned earlier? Mm. And I will take care of the documents and providing them. I will bring them to the appointment as well. Okay. So, yeah, everybody, we're just we're just blowing through this right here because I wanted to get into a comfortable conversational mode. Right. We're not we're not going with the critique. None of you law motherfuckers need to be on here. And be like, oh, my God, she said the cousin could be a hey, get your ass off this live. I ain't even doing that with you guys, man. We ain't going there right now. We're we're doing drills right now, okay? Um, all right. And you guys will provide the document. You'll provide another witness. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, how much is it? So you will have a total of three hundred dollars. That'll be fifty for the witness. That'll be. <clears throat> Don't itemize. Okay. We're not a la carte and shit. Okay. The lettuce is this. The tomato is this. The cheese is this. <laughs> We're gonna charge you extra for the straw that goes with the drink that you ordered. Okay. And this you this uniform I got. Yeah, you're paying for that too. <laughs> I'm trying to get employee in a month. <laughs> that was okay. look. Okay. There, there's ways that we could have tightened that. There's ways we could have tightened that. But that was great. Shout out to you on that. Learn that Thank call you. script. Rehearse that. Um, are you? Are you? Uh, do you have your ticket for eye closed deals? Girl, go get that. Go get that. 
Go get that. Maybe, okay. maybe you could uh, DM Tech. Maybe he could uh, send you something. A little something. Yeah. A little Valentine's just Day. Just with me and A Valentine's Day treat. Yeah. Tech, just you want to you, you want to add anything to that? Special. You want to add anything to that, Tech? Tiger shark. <laughs> <laughs> and and read the comments when you have a chance too. They like we got the Gold Squad in the building. Shout out to Dawn, Erica. Um, they they left some really good tips on how you can tighten that because the call thing. Once you tighten up that call, and it's ironclad. They, anybody that calls you is like basically your customer. And then everything else is clockwork. All you have to do is start funneling people to that phone call, and then you can close deals left and right. Gotcha. Well done. Show any, some love, y'all, in the comments. Show any, some hearts up there, man. Any last questions? Great job. Um, so, at, at, in that case, me offering all of the services that I have... I can still basically run that same kind of script through whatever service. All day. Regardless. Oh, yeah. Just as long as I know my numbers and as long as I know what needs to go to incorporate those numbers, I can run it across the board with whatever I'm offering. Shit, you can sell a gym club membership with that damn call script. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Shape and tone? All right. You got a valid photo ID? Because I got to get you a membership. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it's, it, that thing is ready. It's primed and ready. Yeah. Send me a DM, okay, so you can come to the event. All right? Yes, we'll do that right now. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you for jumping on. So I got a burning question, Tech. I got a burning question. Walk with me here, man. How is right. it? How is it that people can charge 200, 250 and you know 275 whatever and up for loan closing documents but when it comes to other documents all of a sudden they must go by the notary employee handbook Any of you guys could jump on and, and chime in on this one. I need help with that. I need help with that right there because I'm, I'm trying to understand. Now, Georgia is really big on this. I get this a lot from Georgia. Um, Georgia says that we can only charge $5 for uh, notarizations, but yet you'll charge $250 for a loan signing. Why is it that... That law doesn't apply to real estate documents anymore. And are you selling yourself short doing that? I think you are. 
So if a title company or a signing service pays you a hundred eleven dollars, and then you do the exact same thing, but you only charge sixty three dollars. Or better yet, <clears throat> a, a title company calls you and says, we want you to do a loan closing. It's only two signatures to notarize, um, and we're going to pay you $150. Well, according to Georgia State Notary Employee Handbook, why aren't you breaking out the calculator and calculating how much you really supposed to be charging me? Like, oh, 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 title company, you're you're paying me way too much. The state of Georgia only allows me to charge thirty five dollars. Why aren't you hitting them with that? Why are you picking up that bread? Who that Ben? Hey, what's up? <laughs> Salute, brother. What up? <laughs> what up, man? <laughs> how you feeling, King? Hey, feeling great, man. Feeling great. I'm I'm loving this shit, man. This yeah. is the bomb right here, man. <laughs> Talk so, to us, man. So, so what? I think what happens is um, somehow in the process of the training that we get on loan signing, no, we as notaries that tend to think of that as a whole separate uh, line of business, like it's a whole other category, and we forget that that's notary too. And and then in the process of doing that, we elevate that above specialty notary stuff. And we even call our specialty notary service general notary like it's a downgrade. You are 100% right, bro. So they're selling. So you see how that word is detrimental to your business? Yep. It's a killer, man. That, that's why I say that Jim Jones Kool-Aid is a motherfucker, man. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Yep. And meanwhile, right now, you look at what's happening in the mortgage industry with the interest rates. I mean, loan, I mean, not to say that anything is wrong if you're doing loan signing, but that's a cyclical business that's de dependent on how the economy is doing. True. Whereas what, this, what, what, what we're talking about here is, is, is nonstop. People need wills. They need uh, power attorneys all the time. That's a fact. All the time. It's got to get updated all the time. People update their trust all the time. People die all the time. People need passports and birth certificates and driver's license all the time. That's not dependent on the all market. The <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But people need stuff all the time. And it's cyclical. it's cyclical, you're right, man. It's, when it's good, it's good. And when it's not so good, it's not so good. And then Absolutely. when it's good again, it's good again. And then when it's not so good, it's not so good again. And it's a great time to be in a real estate business. It's a good time to be in Airbnb when real estate is good, right? It's a good time to... And then when real estate is not so good, it's not so good to be in Airbnb, right? It's, it's a right. cyclical business. That's not saying that it's bad or worse. It's just that it comes and goes. But, hey... People die all the time. People get born all the time. People buy property all the time, right? People all need, time. you know, so getting good at that process, that's timeless, man. And Absolutely. practicing it on a daily basis, practicing it. So how can you do that? So one way doing the, like the question that you asked, what, do you have an answer for us, by the way, Ben? I mean, what's... Uh, to the question that Tiger posed, what about about uh, about loans? So why people? Uh, yeah, he yeah he said the lines are blurred. I mean, for, yeah, yeah, that's why. Um, yeah, but I would say what you said earlier though, Tech, about the um, treating it like a business, like loan signing is kind of treated like a a job, right? mm. where they feel like. Um, you know, I'm told that I should, you know, I should do it for two hundred dollars, and um, that's what the law, that's what the title company is giving me. So that's what I'm gonna take. But as soon as you kind of go over into this other realm, like you said, it, it's a business, right? Some people, some you know, are intimidated, and that's not the fault of of, um, of the person. It's just we just have to get 
ourselves into that mindset. And I think it's things like this right here that helps us to do that. Because it's not a lot that's filling this, this kind of void right here for, for uh, notarization outside of loan signings. So this is how this is how we get there. Good point, man. So, so I, you know, understanding from what you say, it makes sense now because the the lines have been blurred, right? Because loan signings, they really consider themselves like they are a whole different entity. Although it says the word notary in it, they call themselves NSA, LSAs, whatever, DBAs, whatever, right? And they're like, okay, well, my documents, it requires it, but it's like, the company, the title company can charge 200 or $300 and you're okay with accepting that. But when a private client calls you, who has the, who you're really servicing the, pro, the private client anyway, right? You just got a middleman somewhere in there, which is the title company or escrow company. Sure. You will not charge nowhere near that. Like, you literally could watch the non-disclosure degree agreement and see what the title company charged that company and said, wow, they just got, they just charged $350 for this title, uh, this loan closing. They're only paying me 150 bucks. That means, I mean, like, for me, I would immediately say, that means I could charge 300 bucks. I hear some feedback. Somebody got feedback uh, playing on something. Oh, shit. I felt like I was on TV for a second. <laughs> please please turn down your radio. Tyrone, you got an answer for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this is this, this Tyrone with, with the no renation. Uh, I'm just out here trying to... Uh, what up, Tyrone? I finally get, get to back. meet Tyrone. You, you the Tyrone that Don always talks about? Yeah, yeah, they call me T Fane, T Fane, it's T Fane here. What up, man? <laughs> uh, not much. I heard a lot about you guys, but uh, you know, as me and my partner, we running, you know, we trying to get to these six figures. So I'm just, I said, you know, and I'm gonna ask a question. How, how do I get to the six figures? Or uh, what am I doing currently that I need to improve on? You know, whether it be Osprey, Steve, whether it be the PO, uh, POA, which 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 area where I need to just put the gas on and no brakes to get to the six figures. First, real talk, I would say number one, get the client first. All right. Are people calling you for apostles? Are people calling you for fingerprinting? Are people calling you for wedding officiants? Are people calling you for agencies? Are people calling you for uh, concrete inspections? Like, get the client is really because it's it's not it's not the money. It's really if somebody hits you up and they say I want three grand deeds transferred out of my LLC into my personal account, and you have to drive fifty five miles. And then you get there, and they don't. One, one of the business partners forgot his passport. Like, how much of your time did you just waste? Right? How much? How much is your time worth? <clears throat> so you assign that value to the time that it takes you to execute this role, this this signing. You, as a business owner, you are determining what the value of your time is. So an apostille may, for you to drive 55 miles to drop off some documents to the Secretary of State, it might be $350 for you. It might be 400 or it might be 800 Or for you to go to the emergency room at 3 p.m. in the afternoon on a Saturday, it might be 600 for you, right? So learning, being obsessed or examining the documents that ain't gonna get you the client. The client, how you get the how, how you get the client is demonstrating that you can help them do it. And the way that you help them do it is by you know how much of for me to go downtown to sit in your office, this is 150 bucks for me to do this. So now you're assigning value to your time. And that's how you get to six figures. Okay. All right, okay. I'll, okay, I'll, so I'll, so I'll add something to that. Yeah, so I'll add to that, right? And my, my answer ain't like the traditional way because um, 
Running appointments, um, you know, the, the first question I would say, all right, are you just looking to make low six figures, mid six figures, high six figures, right? Because there's levels to that shit, right? Let, let's play with the low six figures. Let's just say a hundred racks. You want to gross a hundred racks for that year. Okay, what does that look like? You're going to have to generate $8,333 per month, right? Now, if you ran that uh, an appointment every single day, I'm talking about 30 days out of the... Your gross would have to be $277.76 a day. Now, ask yourself... That's just one appointment, right? Now, you could break that up in two appointments, three appointments, however you want to do it, but that's over, you know, like the more appointments you do, the less you can buy back your time. My question would be to you is that how, how long can you keep that up? How long can a person keep running the, uh, those appointments like that every single – because it's easy to – Make the 10 racks a, a, a month and be like, yeah, hey, I did, I finally did it. But that should drain the hell out of you. Uh -huh. Then the next month you took off. You're like, I, I'm, I'm not running that many appointments because I'm, I'm exhausted. Right. So it's the consistency. How long can you stay consistent with it? Because what do you because when when a person poses that question to me, it's like. All right. What do you think is going to happen when you run, you build these great relationships with these title companies, escrow companies, personal clients, law firms, all that stuff, and you're running real hard for the next four months, and in the fifth month, you're like, dude, I need a fucking break. I, I got to take off. I got to go on a vacation. I need to do something. What do you think though, all of those companies are going to do because you decide that you need some me time? And I'm going to take your spot. Uh -huh. You just opened up your floodgates for another company to come in and take your client from you because you are getting burnt out. So, uh -huh. in my opinion, one of the best ways to get it to six figures is to have auxiliaries in your notary business. Meaning, okay, I'm going to run appointments. That's one source of income i'm gonna have a notary agency where i don't have to run every single appointment that's another source of income maybe i create a course or something that's another source of income where i can help other notaries then i'm gonna create a book then i'm gonna create t-shirts and shit i'm gonna do if that is my goal you you feel me if that's my goal to hit mid or high because all right look that's the low end of a, a, a six figures. That's the very low end. That's like one dollar above making six figures. What if you want to make two hundred and fifty thousand dollars? What if you want to make half a mil in this? You gotta run all of your damn appointments. That shit is gonna be hard as hell. So you have to you have to start incorporating uh, products and services that are scalable. Okay. Otherwise, what I'm hearing is a mm -hmm. balance. It's a balance. There, you shouldn't rely on one source of income. That's one, right? We yeah. know, we all know that. Yes. But there should be other sources, and all those other sources bring in bread. The the consistency, and I'll just tell you from my own personal life, the consistency that I have is because when shit was hot. I was I was in the streets. I was like, you know, let me run these appointments. But at the same time, I'm farming out appointments, right? Let me create a book. That became another source of income, which has been paying me for the last three years by itself, right? I don't even touch it. Then I create an online course. That's another source of income. So I'm buying back my time. You feel me? And then if I do coaching, if I do any private coaching and stuff like that, 
the 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 you're not gonna find a person to spend three thousand dollars for a notarization, but there's somebody that's gonna spend three thousand dollars for private coaching. Did I uh-huh. did I step outside of the notary industry? No, I'm still in the notary industry. Now I'm just coaching other people. Now now I'm able to get some leverage from my from my knowledge. Y'all feel me? Does that answer your question, Tyrone? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. I just want to uh, hear both people view. You know, some of that stuff um, we already doing and the flow of doing. So I just want to hear what you guys got to say. You know, because you know, I tell about um, even though you know we have some clients come up, they may be fr- friends, friends or family. I just tell them, hey, this is a business at the end of the day. You know, how I feel about discounts. I hate them. <laughs> so I'm by if that invoice is certified, we don't move. So that's just the way it is. So. I appreciate both of you guys giving me the, um, both of your, your views of it because I just, you know, want to hear somebody else what they th- think about it. Yeah. And what did you think about it? Um, both um, points are valid. You know, he was, he was, um, he was focused more on uh, getting the client and you was focused on from what I got from it. You need one, one screen of income. So the main thing I got from that, you need to have balance and make sure the things that you do balance out and making the money that you want them to make. That's what I got out of what you're saying. Indeed. So, so I'm gonna reverse the chair real quick, Tyrone. What are you doing right now to get to touch those six figures? Ooh, where do I start? <laughs> oh, we doing our uh, speed trainings. We doing one on ones. Um, myself, I'm a certified life coach, so I'm, I'm doing the coaching. Um, get ready to the start of this book because you know it's like I got a lot of books in me they need to come out so you know some about because I have a um, business degree so some of them about business some of them about you know relationships you know, he's about his journey you know being a notary so um, more of the motivation side because I'm learning and more and more we have these means and these trainings at Notary Nation a lot of people just don't know and when you listen to them, it's like they don't have their stuff for four years, five. You know, looking at them like, I ain't had my book for almost a year now, but I had the mindset to get out there and run. That I don't, I'm not one of the people that believe in giving people money for training or giving people stuff to have on my belt and not use it. That's not who I am. If I put my hand to the plow, I'm going to use that plow to get that field done. That's just me. That's just me. I love it, brother. Well, you guys, you you guys are a strong team out there in Florida, man. Y'all keep up the good work, and I'm rooting for y'all. And I'll see you at the lock-in. Yeah, lock it up. <laughs> Tech, you got any final words, brother? Yeah, man. I, yeah, listen. It's important that you know, at the very like, you can apply some of that stuff right now, like. If you're, if you know, people who are watching, then, you know, obviously, this is something that, again, I'm going to keep hammering this home. This is every day. We practice this every day. It's like that. It's flip, flip. Mm-hmm. Hammer, hammer this stuff down. You can practice it right now. Right? You can put this into practical application right now. Right? Put a price on your time. All right? It's going to cost me about fifty dollars to cross a bridge. It's gonna cost me, you know, another hundred dollars to sit in your house for forty-five minutes, and I might have to bring a client with me, so that's gonna be another seventy-five dollars. Like this is for you to go into these situations because they're never the same. But you know how much your time is worth. You know that whatever, whenever somebody's gonna show up with, it's gonna take about an hour and a half for me to go in and take care of this. Hour and a half from worth my time is worth three hundred seventy-five bucks. I'm going to go help. I'm going to make sure that this is executed professionally. I'm going to show up prepared because I've done my disqualification process. I know that you know what you're doing. You have everything in line. And I'm going to walk into your house or your office or your hospital. I'm going to do it smoothly. And I'm going to exit. And everything's going to be executed to perfection. And I'm going to follow up with you. And and you're going to be able to go take care of whatever business you get got. It's going to be $400 for me to do that. And I can do it. So, but because you know it's gonna take you about forty-five minutes to do it, and you know how much your time is valued. So, you guys, you can apply this right now. Like you can, you can 
if you have a notary commission and you are getting appointments and you, even if you're not getting calls, this is, but understanding this is where this comes from. All right, tag, I'm not getting calls. Go ahead, put up Google ad. That's the easy way. But once these people call you, what do you say to these people? How do you actually make it worth your time? Know what your time is worth, first of all. $125 an hour minimum. Okay, great. So if somebody calls you, it's going to take you 35 minutes to get there. I can at least take that appointment for 75 bucks minimum. So you can do this right now, though, man. And all you right. have the power to do this, right? But if you weren't trained to do this or if you just, you, this has never been exposed to you, right? We're not, we're, not, we're not talking about completing documents here. We're talking about actually acquiring clients and getting comfortable with this whole process. And we, we do this every day. Hey, thank you for that. Thank you for that. I rolled one. I, I rolled one of the best. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, tap, tap in any time, Tyro. All right, thank y'all. Sure. So we got we got a question from uh, MDB Apostille Notary. He said, or he said, uh, I hear feedback. You hear that? Snoring. Nah, I mean, like, I hear my voice no, echoing hear my back. Voice echoing. No, I don't hear it. Okay. okay. So, it says, uh, so it says, uh, you would suggest creating learning material for other new notaries even when you're not that deep into it? Uh, or should you wait until you get it, become an expert status? What would you say, Tech? What would you say? Do it now. I mean, I would say... Be careful, though, because if you start talking about something that you don't really know and that you just might have heard somewhere, I would be careful if you start to, you know, you know, encourage people to spend money when they, you know, telling somebody to go jump on something like Thumbtack or something and you don't know how to use it is dangerous to me. I would rather you learn about it first. Learn what the platform actually implies and then decide to jump into it. So... Creating so that that would be my example. I wouldn't put out a thumbtack book if I never mastered thumbtack. Put it that way. But so something like that, no. Otherwise, if you can help somebody get to the next level, and you can speak about something that they're particularly going through, absolutely. So answering phone calls is one thing, right? You made the call script. That was massive. Uh, you can help somebody specifically with one thing, go ahead and do it. It doesn't have to be out of, you know, sift through a universal loan application, right? All right, that's... But I would just say when you're putting something out like that, like um, uh, like the Thumbtack book, I knew it was important that because it was such a powerful tool that I have to show that this works. So putting something out like that, by all means, yes. But if you can get somebody to the next level, you don't have to be an expert. You just have to show that this is helping this person. Yeah. Um. um. Yeah, you know what, Tech? I'm going to jump off and jump back on because I hear the feedback on my side. All My cat is snoring. You know, he's got a little bit of asthma. So he's got that little uh, little buzziness in the background. I'll read some of the comments. Yeah, so thanks for that question. Uh, Don says, we love you, Kings. We love you, too. One, two, one, two. He said, 
Y'all balanced that out mm-hmm. perfectly. Tech provided the foundation to build a business. The tiger showed how to scale it. You need both to grow one hand, wash the other. Yeah, good observation. Yeah, a little bit of both. Well, yeah. It complements each other. It really does. And you really see that there is a distinguishable difference. And it's not wrong or better or worse, but it's like when you have both of these things, damn, it's powerful. It really is. It, 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 it really can be. And it, it, it exists. It ain't imaginary. You can actually develop that, right? Mm-hmm. Who else want to tap in? Anybody want to tap in? Stink waters were green upstairs. Yeah, she's green. Yeah. Right on, she said, I love y'all. I love you too. All right, I'll be here in a second. Mm. Yeah, you killed the um, hot I'll be there in a second. Seat. So, again, make sure you guys no. go to the link in the bio. Uh, we have the eye close deals on Monday, February 20th. That's next Monday. Brush your teeth. All right, we will have you a hot seat so that and then this is something that. On. Don't avoid this. This is something that you do it and practice daily. You, and it becomes natural. You, you're you going to do it anyway. This is how you uncover those hidden profits in your notary business. The notary business, right? Not the notary job aspect, right? The notary, this is the business side of it. So that's next Monday at 4 p.m. West Coast time, 7 p.m. East Coast time. So hit up the link in the bio so y'all get to get those tickets. We're gonna, really? we, you're going to get us, mm-hmm. me and Tiger. We're going to break this down. No and this is going to be an yes, immense no. level of value. No this won't be like anything, no any other summit, it's any not, other conference, not. any other. This is not like you You guys see. You know, this is how we roll. This is how we rock, man. This is how we get down. This is how we get down, man. This is, this, this is the only way that we know how to do it. We help you guys book Deals. Get the client. Is that what you want to do? You want to get the client? Yeah, you have that power. You really do. You know, also, uh, also uh, yeah, this feedback is stupid, dude. Um, all right, that's all good. You want to cut jump off there? No, no, nah, nah, we good. We good. I power through if uh, people want to power through. Um. Going back to the question of creating a course, if you see any level of success at something that you're doing, you qualify. That's how I feel about it. If you've seen any level of success of something that you're doing, you're qualified to write a book, create a course, sell it to another company because it has worked for you. And if it worked for you, most likely it'll work for somebody else. When I wrote Rise of the Smart Notary, I wrote everything that was working for me in that first year. I was only a year in, but I was like, hey, look, this works. It actually works. And I was like, "Okay, I know it's going to work for somebody else because I was at the time I was already teaching people um, for free. Uh, I was I, I would literally charge people like. $5, $5, I would start off a course and I'd be like, hey, if I charge you $5, would you pay for a course for me to teach you how to do whatever business, right? And they were like, yeah, I'll pay for it. So, and then when they would send me testimonials and they'd be like, yo, this shit worked, then I knew I had something viable, right? So once you try something in your own business, I would always suggest try it in your own business first to see if you get favorable results. I don't suggest being a theorizer. I don't suggest watching tech, watching me, watching Dawn, watching Tyrone do things, and then you're just writing a book based off of what we've done. Try it out for yourself. See if you... There's only one real merit that will solidify if you, you have something. When people break bread with you. When people reach into their pocket, grab their wallet out, and spend money with you, you know you have something. Otherwise, I I would probably hold off on uh, creating courses and stuff until I know that this has worked in my business personally. I hope that makes sense. Don't be a theorizer. Be a, be a uh, participator. Yeah, it's more fun that way, too. 
Yeah. Cause you know what you're talking about, and you ain't you ain't making up stuff. Like if you guys ask me anything about starting a notary agency, I can tell you off the rip what to do. Because I had an agency before I became a notary. One of the questions is how much are Google ads? You said how much is Google ads? Uh, yeah. How much are Google ads? So, yeah, it's as low as you want it to be. I think it starts at two bucks. I yeah, I, I, I have Google ads running at a dollar fifty a day. Okay, yeah, so dollar fifty. Yeah, so you run a Google ad, and then the person hits you up. Then what? That's the next step. That's the next step. Because yes. how do you find more clients? You know, you can throw out some business cards. You can throw out goodie bags. You can throw out, you know, spam emails. You can do all that stuff. No problem. But understand that they're going to say, okay, you want me to give you a job? Great, I'll give it to you. Can you be in Fayetteville at 7 o'clock and I'll give you $65? Is that okay with you? If it is, then there you go, right? And if they do that every once in a while, and if that's okay with you, then there you go. But if you want more of that, if you want to be more confident in the ability to command $369 for a power of attorney for two signatures, because that's how much you value, how much value you've placed onto your time to go out and execute this. It's gonna take me 45 minutes to drive across town. And then I gotta send to this hospital for 20 minutes, which is another hour and five, and then another 45 minutes to go back. So about two hours of time. And about an hour of my time is worth 150 bucks. So I time that by two, so now it's $300 and I get 359 dollars to cover the gas. So now I'm good. I can be there. So, there you go. And it makes sense. It's not imaginary. It's not mythical. It's actually it's practical application. And this is your business. And the fact that you do it faster, you do it cheaper, you do it more efficient than you can store or your cross-town competitor, that's the business right there. Boom. And it's fun because now you put the dollar fifty to a Google ad and then... I don't know, 70 people call you. You, you can you, Tell me you can't get one of those, Tiger. I'm going to get half at I'm least. Half. So that's 35. Good. And of those 35, you think at least one of those people might want it like right now or today? Yep. Or, you know, tomorrow? Oh, uh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> And one of those might need you to print for them, or maybe they need you to drop it off. I don't know. There's going to be some so many scenarios in which you know you have opportunities, and the opportunities are everywhere, they're everywhere. But how do you find these? How do you just grasp these opportunities out of thin air? They're just floating around. Boom. So it starts with knowing your price, knowing how much it's going to cost me to go out and drive an hour and a half and sit in this person's house. Their office and then execute this advanced health delivery. And I want to say, uh, I want to say, uh, shout out to everybody that's on here too, man, because this type of training is really important, right? Once you realize that this is a good old boy industry, it's 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 very old, very archaic, very um. Technology has barely touched this industry. And because you're learning from, like, I like to consider myself cutting edge. I don't know, the tech, you like to consider yourself cutting edge? Yes. Yeah, I like to consider myself cutting edge. Shit, I was, I was using AI like four years ago, y'all, on this notary business. And like, I, I got recorded uh, conversations where people will be like, oh, my God, wow, this is amazing, right? They're talking to the damn computer. I'm like, I'm nowhere to be found. So that's why you guys see the robot on the book cover, because I was using AI way back then. So now I'm introducing AI into the notary industry, 
I heard a couple of people talking smack and shit like, oh, well, you know, how can you teach something on AI uh, when it just came out? Nigga, this shit been out for fucking decades. The hell are you talking about? AI has been around for 70 damn years, man. You just now getting put onto this shit. You know those iRobot vacuums that go around your house and shit and it knows where the kitty litter is? and That's AI, nigga. So, yeah, hell yeah, I'm qualified to talk about AI in the notary industry. Um, so, that type of cutting-edge information, the I close deals from people that actually close deals in the notary industry, like, this shit is pricey. You know, like, we could easily be charging three racks, five racks. A matter of fact, I've done that, to be honest with you. The people that want to work with me personally, they drop those bags because they want to accelerate their process. Now, people that are either on a tighter budget or maybe they want to take their time and learn on their own yeah go ahead you know get the online course and then study at your own pace right but those that are like yo i'm trying to get to this bag early i ain't got no time to waste and they have that sitting on their credit card or whatever they're gonna spend that breath because they know it's an investment I will, look at it this way man if i charged you a thousand dollars to help you make a thousand dollars every single month is it worth it? Is it worth it? <laughs> right. Yeah, I would say so. So you you basically, so you, you basically will make twelve thousand dollars by investing one thousand dollars. That that that's the, like there's no convincing with that. I don't have to convince somebody to do that. They already know that's the path that they want to take. So when we do these master classes, me and Tech do these master classes. Um, we're gonna do one with advertising and stuff like that. Nobody's teaching you this shit. Yo. They're they're not teaching you sales copy. They're not teaching you landing pages. See this this industry is broken up in two parts. Traffic and conversion traffic and conversion let me try to make it simpler uh, eyeballs and sales here's the thing you get somebody's attention right I want you to I want you to imagine me minding my own business watching Netflix and shit at the same time I'm scrolling on on my phone and shit and I'm like you know I'm, I'm, I'm thumb scrolling on Instagram right and I'm, I'm, I'm looking for something to binge watch on Netflix. Now, while I'm on Instagram, I f you got my attention. Now I look at you. I turn. I stop what I'm doing. Now I pay attention to you. You know what? I do need to get a power of attorney done for my father-in-law. I'm going to call this company. Now what do you do? Now you got my attention. What are you going to do now? You got to close the deal. I don't care how you do it. It could be <laughs> through an AI. It could be through automated process. It could be through thumbtack. It could be through, you know, is on 24 Calendly. Regardless of the fact, you have to close the deal. Otherwise, if there's no money exchange, you have no business. None. I don't care. Hey, I have a, a 20 page business plan. I don't give a fuck about your business plan. You're not making any money. Let, let's be honest, man. Let, let, let's put like, let all you weak motherfuckers get off this live. We got to talk real. You have no business if you have no sales. You just don't. You have to solidify yourself with the sales process. It doesn't. There's many ways of closing a deal. Tech could close deals without him talking to anybody. Me, you call me, I'm going to close you. But there has to be some type of exchange. You know there's people out there working on their 
standard operation operating procedures, their SOPs, they're working on customer service, they're working on employee handbooks, they're working on operations, they're working on administrative, they're working on finance, and they've never closed one deal. You see how much time they're wasting over there? Like, why are you focusing on that? We need to get you to start closing some deals today. Have you gotten any phone calls? No, I didn't work on that yet. Why the hell are you running from marketing? Why are you running away from marketing? Oh, um, have you closed any deals yet? Have you had any sales? Oh, sales, ugh, you know, it's, it's like, it's sleazy. Nigga, they don't have those salespeople no more. <laughs> those old Italian dudes with the slick hair, with all the rings on the finger, be like, ha ha, smoking on us, chewing on a cigar and shit, selling you a jalopy. Them niggas don't exist anymore. Why are you comparing yourself to them? Why? Like, people buying cars on an app. Carvana. We need you to attract clients. Because that's what... Let's be honest, y'all. That's what all y'all want. That's what I want. I would prefer all my clients chase me than me chasing clients. Let's be honest, right? Mm. Type... Type in one if you agree with me. Like, we want the clients to chase us, not us chasing the clients. So now that they're chasing us, how can we get the conversion? How can we close the deals? The fulfillment part is the easiest shit. It's, it's not hard to do the fulfillment. Get into your car, drive over there, stamp a couple of documents, you're done. That's not hard. But the most, ch the challenging thing or the, the, the obstacle that people run away from the most, but in my intake form, and I know text intake form, everybody is like, I want more clients. I want more clients. I want more clients. Well, there's only like one true solution to get more clients. You need to be in front of more people. They don't see you. Where are you? You, you're, making, you're making one post a week on Instagram. What kind of splash is that in the water and shit? That's a small little rock that you just... That's it. You need a big-ass boulder. You need a whole mountain to fall into that pond. Bam! That's a splash. I need you guys, especially Ghost Squad. We need to flood the market. We're about to Noah's Ark this shit in a second. I promise you. Those that are on this boat, woo! If you ain't got the invitation to the boat, your ass gonna drown. I personally am gonna make sure that I drown your ass. Personally. I got my dial on this AI at a three. I'm going to turn this motherfucker so high, I'm going to break the knob off of it. And I'm going to flood this damn market so hard that no other notary, or unless you're part of the ghost squad or something, you can't breathe under this water. Topic, right? It's now a hot or it now has kind of 
gain some steam. But, you know, been putting this into practice for years. For years? Yeah, I think I had two robots on two different books by accident. I got three tickets left, Tech, and then we sold out at an AI mass uh, crash course. You guys could go to the link, check that out. Three tickets left. After that, it's done. I ain't, I'm not teaching that class anymore. Because by that time, some new shit come out, and I'm going to be like Tiger 3.0. I close deals February 20th. If you don't have your ticket, get it. You can go to my bio or you can go to text bio. And then the day after that, AI crash course. It's going to be a three-day live interactive workshop. You can get your ticket in my bio on that. But this, this game about to change. They introduced AI to you slightly with Ron. That's an AI, believe it or not. They introduced it to you. Didn't kick off like they were they were expecting it to. And then the price margins is shit. Terrible. Terrible. Five dollar notarization, seven dollar notarizations. That shit is whack. Let me ask you something, Tiger. Hmm. If you do ten power of attorneys, give me a ballpark range. If you do ten power of attorneys per day, give me a ballpark range okay. of what you would expect to take home. I tell you exactly the number. And this is a minimum. One thousand seven hundred and eighty-nine dollars and seventy cents. Okay. Okay. So if you do twenty power of attorneys, how much would you take home? Three thousand five five hundred and seventy-nine dollars and forty cents. If you did twenty power of attorneys, so let's keep that number in mind. That's three rags. If you do. 20 power of attorneys, but you only get $25 per power of attorney. How much would you have taken home? If I charge $20, $25? If you only charge, if you only got $25 for executing a power of attorney. And I did 20 of them? Yes. 500 bucks. 500 bucks. All right. Because you didn't leave the house, <laughs> because you didn't find a client and maybe a notary platform, a uh, round platform found it for you, but you still do the same amount of work, right? You still have to sign a document. You still have to stamp the document, right? You might it might be an electronic impression or electronic signature, but you're still doing the same amount of work, right? Mm -hmm. You might even do more work because there is a technical aspect of it. They have to pass the verification, the ID verification. They may or may not make it in time because there's a two minute limit, and if they don't answer the questions correctly in two minutes and it's going to kick them off and they can't retry it again for another 24 hours. So you're already working. You're doing tech support. And then you go in, you navigate through the document and you help them sign the document. You're still doing the same amount of work and then you walk away with $25. Mm -hmm. Or $500 for a day versus a $3,000. So, and when I heard that story... Of a, this is a personal story, not my personal story, but someone shared this story with me when they were doing 20 power attorneys a day, 20 power attorneys a day. I almost lost, I almost fell out of my chair. I almost choked. I almost literally choked because I felt so, at that point, that's when it really hit me. Like I said, we've been doing this stuff for years, but when I'm starting to hear stories like that, I was like, we, bro. People are being misled. They're saying, well, if somebody gives me the client, I can at least get $25. Well, if you got the client yourself, see how, do you see 
the difference? You see how this becomes a business now and not a job? Do you see why you have to have a blend of some of that? I'm not saying it has to be exclusively like that, but I'm saying you have to distinguish, make a distinguish, a distinct difference between the two. One in which I get to plan myself and I command what my value, what my time is valued at. Or do I solely and heavily rely upon these jobs being given to me by a, a platform that is giving me 25 bucks to do the 20 power returnies a, a day? On my chair, bro. And no one told her. No one told her. Not her fault. Not your fault. No yeah. one told you. No one showed. So, you know, that's all I can think of. All right, we got to help you get clients now. We got to help you understand why you started this in the first place. It wasn't to be somebody's assistant and get there and then let them cut you down because they used to give you 20 orders a day. Like, again, you did 20 power returnies, then it went down to 10 power returnies a day. And then it's three every, you know, every other week. You know, also, tech... I wanted to add to that, man, is like a, a big problem that I've noticed in the notary industry, right, is that they haven't increased their prices at all. You see inflation going up. You see the government printing out money. The employee, the notary employee handbook hasn't been updated since 1965 and shit. And... You're running these numbers and you're like, you're not even making no bread, man. Like you're 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 literally running notarization prices that was set in 1985. You should be going up on your prices damn near like every chance you get. My prices are like the stock market. It goes up and down. Depending on when you call in your situation. You might get it at the peak. You might get it at, you know, midway somewhere. But it fluctuates depending on the situation of that client. Why? Like, I see so many notaries doing, like, these old-ass prices. And I'm like, I actually, I just got rid of one of my law firms uh, because I told him, we're going through a price increase. He, first of all, he was already upset that notaries was making more money than him, and he's a lawyer. Go figure. But I said, hey, look, we're going through a price increase. We're going to have to increase with, with everything that's going up. He said, how much are you going up to? Now, because he was doing bulk, we were charging him $150 for uh, certain documents. Now it's like, you know, close to damn near 200. He was like, no, nah, we're not going to do it. Be like, we can't do you, We can't do your documents no more then. I'm sorry. Go find somebody else now. Because at this point, I would be losing money. And he, he wouldn't be just taking money away from my pockets, but he would be taking money away from the pockets of the notary that's actually running the assignment. Because your dollar is worth less now. High gas prices, you're paying more for paper and shit. Oh, you know, oil changes cost more. You got to increase your prices, baby. Yeah, exactly. The the lo uh, Fisherman said, yeah, the rates for loan docs have been the same for the last 10 years. And it's getting lower, bro. It's getting lower. You know why it's getting lower? Because your fellow notary is accepting these low-ass prices. It ain't the title company. Don't blame the title company. Don't blame the escrow company. They're only going to offer what they think they can get for it. The same way they play with you on the phone, you'd be like, uh, we're paying 65 And then they shut the fuck up, right? 
Oh, he went for it? Hey, he he went for it. <laughs> he went for it. <laughs> Alright, we'll send you all the information. And they laughing. <laughs> uh, oh, um, she said, "What's the Ghost Squad?" It's an elite group of apex and entrepreneurs who happen to be notaries. We look at ourselves as moguls and entrepreneurs first, who happen to be notaries. Who happen to have a commission. So we approach this notary business as a business. Like, this is just another sector like plumbing. And how are we going to market our plumbing business? And we're not going to do the plumbing ourselves. We may contract other outsider plumbers to run those assignments. So uh, the Ghost Squad is invitation only. You either get you know, invited by somebody on the Ghost Squad, Dawn, Tech, uh, there's a myriad of other people on there. And you know, there's a screening process. We're probably already looking at what you're doing. Because we everywhere. We looking at people pages. We looking at the type of information. We know if they're doing fuckboy shit. I'm just being honest. Like, like the the crew is the, we're we're small, but we're we going hard. We even break bread with each other. Uh, we give assignments to each other behind the scenes. We have uh, private master classes. We, we, we do a lot of things behind the scene. He says they're stopping on this. <laughs> you mean he's stopping on the product, huh? The, the, the ROM platform is stopping on the product. <laughs> is that what you mean? I hope. I think that's what you meant. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Well. And, now, that shifts into your control now. You know, you can now control how uh, private clients are finding you. And then if you choose to go out and outsource those and then, you know, have your business and run it that way because, it's, because it makes sense for you, right? It's not saying that you have to do that, but it makes sense. But at least you have the option because your car may break down one day and then you still might get a phone call. Yep. But you're going to say no. You know, I remember that happened to me. It wasn't um, my my wife. Um, they were fixing her horn or something like that. It was like I saw a ticket to the dealership, and then she drove my car because it was just going to take like maybe two hours to fix it. Nothing too crazy. So I drove her car to the dealership and left it there. She took my car to work. And then, you know, the dealership gave me an Uber back home, right? And they said, yeah, we'll be, back. We'll be done, Mr. Mako, in about an hour, an hour, two hours. Turns out that turned into eight hours, right? But I'm still getting appointments, and my wife has my car. But am I saying no to those appointments? Nah, you book those appointments still. You can still confirm those. You can still secure those appointments. That's because we, we approach this like a business. approach it like the business that it is and it's important that you do it it's not that it's better or worse in my opinion it is better but i'm just saying that it's important that you at least acknowledge that there is a separation between the two that th it, these are two distinctly different approaches to the notary profession because i could just see myself not having that approach and saying oh i don't have a car so i guess i can't take that i can't I'm sorry I'm sorry sir uh, we're actually out of commission for the next, we're out of, out of service for the next two hours or so. 
or eight hours until we get our car back. Don't let that stop me. Don't let it stop you either because, like you're saying, traffic and eyeballs. Yeah, and then what if you decide that you want to go on a vacation? Why should your business, like, a business will not stop making money just because the owner decided to go on vacation? That's why we adopt the mentality of a business owner, a business mogul. Because just because you decide to go on vacation, your business should still be making money. Oh, so because I decide to go on a cruise with my wife, I'm losing money? No. I can take the phone call on the cruise and I could dispatch a notary while my pina colada is being prepared. And I'm smoking on that ooey because I'm on vacation. <laughs> But you know what I mean? Like, any, you might have your your kid's basketball game to go to. Any, you might you might have met a hot chick that you want to go on a date with, and then you got that phone call. What are you gonna do, man? You know how boss like it feels. To be at the theater knowing that a notary appointment is being fulfilled and you watching Wakanda forever at the theater. Boss, that shit is, that's boss shit, dude. It's that, it's the little stuff, just like that. It's the, the, the liberation, the liberating feeling. Like, yeah, I can just go watch Wakanda forever and have some popcorn and some Nestle Crunch and a hot dog if I want. It, it, it's such a great listen it's like Mr. Rogers it's such a good feeling to know you're alive I'm telling you man when I get a ding on my phone and the notary sends a message that says notarization complete and I'm in the theater with my wife and I'll be like great job sending payment over to you right now I'm like it, I, I can't even explain it. it it's, it's on a whole nother level. Whole nother level, man. And that's scalable because now I can, I can run 10 appointments with that business model and not even break a sweat. No wear and tear on my vehicle at all. I can dispatch 10 different notaries in 10 different states in one day and never leave my home. And then all I see is money getting deposited into my account. If there's any problems, hey, give me a call. S some dope shit, man. It's how you approach this business. Well, that's it, bro. I'm going to take off, man. I'm going to go see what the wifey doing, man. Me too. I'm out of here, man. Hey, last shot. This is your last chance. I close deals the next Monday. If you haven't gotten your tickets, go get it right now. Go get the link in the bio. I encourage you. There will be an immense value, immense level of value. As you guys can see, man, we enjoy this. We obsess with this. We love it. And this is not this is not like a notary meetup, all right? This ain't like your chamber of commerce, the, <laughs> the social event at your local chamber of commerce, all right? We ain't talking about that, all right? We're talking about closing deals. One objective, close deals. That's it. That's it. So go get that ticket, y'all. Peace, peace, peace. peace.